I was fired from Etisalat actually. Right. So I was at home for one year and I had no job. At this time I was broke, busted down, I had no money. I just said, just, just start praying because mm -hmm. this thing is bad. <laughs> <laughs> what is it like to be fired? <laughs> Who? <laughs> he removed his glasses. <laughs> Look, let me tell you, it was quiet. <laughs> you know when you're fired, yeah? Oh, it's quiet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like you just hear silence. Yeah. I just felt like, okay, she they said your gift to make room for you, mm -hmm. Abby. So now there is nothing. The chips are down. Your back is against the wall. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? I don't think I'm a fine face. <laughs> <laughs> but Some people will disagree. You, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of people will disagree. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I don't want people to know me you know, because say, of oh, that. He's a fine boy, yes. no, or he can speak well, no. I wanted people to know me for my because performance. Of your Been in the industry since at least 2015. Yes, about yeah? 2015. Yes. Yes, yeah. but I knew you for the first time. I mean, I'd seen you. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I paid attention with Sugar Rush, obviously. Well, yeah, a lot of people did. Yes. A lot of people did. Yes. But you know what? What it was in Sugar Rush was that you took a character that could be dismissed as a comical character, yeah. and you made it present. <laughs> So people couldn't take their eyes off it. Yeah. You know, is this to say, oh, it's a funny character and move on. But what I sense what people were talking about was, no, it's not just that it was a funny character, but this is a great actor. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I don't know how to respond to that because, yeah. I mean, like, I'm, I'm very passionate about this craft. You yeah. know, like, I'm super passionate about it. Mm. I've always been. Um, anybody who knows me um, knows that I've just been very passionate about it. Yeah. So most times I take every, like, I take all my work seriously. Yes, um, regardless, like, from stage to mm. film, whatever mm. it is. And mm. then, I mean, first off, it was Jaddy that called. You know? <laughs> the great first and Jaddy, foremost, the great Jaddy, Jaddy, Jaddy. you know, yes. and then... At the time, my career was just budding. I was doing a show for African Magic called Unbroken at the time. Yes. It was a, yeah, yeah, t yes. 260 t yes. t um, teledrama. Yeah. You know, and then I, I, I came back from work. This was, say, at about 10 p.m., 11. Right. And then I saw on IG, and I saw Bimbo, I saw Bisola, I saw Adesua, and I'm like, right. this is the kind of film someone should be making. And I didn't know the name at the time. Right. So I just went to bed and I said, God, please, like, when will someone start making this sort of films? Mm. And then by the time I woke up at about six, seven, getting ready to go back to work, mm -hmm. I saw that a certain number had called me at about four, mm -hmm. four a.m. in the morning. Mm -hmm. At the time, I was still using Android. <laughs> no, no disrespect to no Android. No disrespect to Android. <laughs> so you Android you know, I still have an Android phone. Yes. So, and then I checked, and then, you know, True Color says it's Jade Usibaru. Right. And then it happened that it was the same film yeah. that I had seen Bimbo and the likes and then uh, Bisola and Adesua on. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, ah. What is going on? And then I called the number back and like, oh my God, Uzo, you know, we wanted to talk to you. You know, we mm -hmm. want you on our gig, you know. I'm like, so I had to, you know, she was like, okay, so you talk to my PM or something like that. And yeah. then he would, you know, follow up and yes. all of that. Yeah. When I caught the phone, yes. I literally, I did a happy dance. <laughs> Literally, I was like, yeah. what? Yeah. Is this how God answers prayers? Yes, you yes, know, and then, yes. you know, I got on set. I, I was only, I had three scenes in the entire yes. film. Yeah. And I think two scenes made the final cut. Right. Or maybe four, about four scenes and then three made the final cut. Either yes. way, you know. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, like, people liked it. and then, Loved it. What is like? <laughs> loved it. <laughs> you know, and then, yes. So from there, that's when my journey into cinema. Yeah. Because that was majorly my right. first major, major cinema, cinema yes. movie. Yes, that's right. why. Because before that, I'd seen you in Unbroken. Yes. Because I was yes. an addict of African magic. You know, telling novellas. So if it's yeah. broken, if it's hood, if it's I would see. It. Yeah. But you know, a lot of things are happening over yeah. 260 episodes. So how did the response, how did you receive it? From Sugar Rush? Yes. Oh. Like, so I heard, so one of the first things that blew me away was, mm. that I, I don't know his name. So he's an American Hollywood actor, black right, guy. Right. Um, I can't remember his name. So he came to do something for Ebony Live. I can't remember his right, name. Right, right. And then in one of his classes, mm. somebody said that he made reference to the film. Wow. And they made reference to my performance. Yeah. I mm. think, yeah. like, that was the biggest accolade that yeah. I could have gotten at the time. Yeah. Because, like, this is, this is some... Hollywood guy, yeah. I forgot his name, black yeah. guy, you know, and he said that, oh, he saw the film, I remember seeing him at the premiere, right. and then he said, oh, the, he's one of his best performances in that film, but this character, um, I think his name was Knight, you know, made reference to me, and then my friends and guys were sen yeah, sending me, me like, Uzo, do you? I'm like, yo, yeah. Yeah. like, you know, so for me, that was, that was the biggest thing mm -hmm. that happened, and mm -hmm. 
it was it was refreshing. So at the time, I was just my career was just budding. Yes, you know, I wasn't yeah. sure because I had done corporate for ten years. Yes, you know, and I was I was like, God, is this? I mean, like, I've been doing this all my life, mm. but I wasn't sure if I was supposed to hang my corporate this. boots and then go to my creative boots, yeah. you know. And then I said, show me a sign. Like, just tell mm. me if this is what you really want me to do. Yeah. And then that happened. And yeah. then in the same, almost the same period of time, I was mm. nominated for AMVC. Yes. You know, twice. Yes. Twice. Two, two, two films two in films. the same yes. category, yes. you know. And I was like, okay, so yes, I think I, we have, I would day here. I've heard your message. <laughs> yes. Loud and so clear. I'll just be here. So. Yeah, just so that I don't geek out on your films, because I can continue talking about your films. Let me just take a segue. I know that you say you worked in corporate for 10 years. Yes, now you I worked did. in a telco at Yes, I point. did work in telco. And then you were... I you worked in retail, sports, um, sports, um, fitness and sports. Right. A retail company for fitness and sports, right. yeah. And you quit or you were fired or something? So I was, I was to be honest, so this is the first time I'm saying this, you right. know, um, anywhere. Um, I was fired from Etisalat, actually. Oh, um, wow. I don't think my mom even knows. <laughs> yeah, I don't think my mom knows. Wow, I, I thank you for sharing that. Yeah, my, my brother, I told my brother years after, you know, right. I was fired sometime in 2012. Um, something happened in my department. I was heading the, the group at the time, the team at right, the time. And right. then when something happened, I had to take the fall as the leader or the mm, lead, mm. you know, in the group. And then I tried to get into film, you right. know, um, in 2012, but it was really slow. So I, I think mm. the only gig I got between 2012 and 2013 when I got my second job was some stage drama, you know, mm. um, Shea Babatokwe, great guy, yeah, yeah, you amazing. know, and then he, he got me the gigs. It was me, Diana, Yakini, and um, Adolu. Yeah. So we did a, this thing for Diageo, you know, right. different 30 different schools, blah, blah, blah. Right. And that's the only gig I, had, I did between, between 2012, 2012 November 2012 when I was fired, and December 2013. Right. So I was at home for one year, and I had no job. Nobody was calling me for film. Wow. I'm telling you, it was, it was terrible. It was, it was terrible. So, because one would have thought, I'm sure you, in your mind, okay, well, it's acting, so yes. I use it to fill the time. Good. Nothing happened today. Nothing. Nothing. Nobody called me. It was only she that called me. Wow. So I was like, okay, I, should, I think I should go back. I dusted my certificate again, and I'm like, let's go back to the streets. And somehow, I got a job again. Mm -hmm. Then that's for another five years. And mm -hmm. then 2018, eventually, mm -hmm. I was like, I think I'm done. I think mm -hmm. I have tried, mm -hmm. you know. And then I tried. I left my company about April 2018. Mm -hmm. Got my first gig um, with Iroko. August 28, 2018. Right. So this was like four or five. At this time, I was broke, busted down. I had no money. Yeah. In fact, it was so bad that I was saying a prayer by 12 noon. You know how after you've prayed in the morning mm -hmm. and everybody had gone to work, I was mm -hmm. alone in the house, in my house. Yeah. And it was quiet. And yeah. everybody, I was hearing people, you know, everybody had gone to work. Yeah. And I'm like, I just said, just, just start praying because mm -hmm. this thing is bad. <laughs> 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 like, this thing is terrible. Yeah. So I was praying, yeah. and then a call shortened my prayer. You know, I had mm. to wrap up the prayer because the mm. call came in. Mm. And then it was somebody had done my MBA with, Onyo Deze. She's a producer, mm. you know. And she says, and at this time, I didn't even know her in my class. Mm. I knew her, but I didn't talk to her. You know, it was, you know how um, postgraduate classes are? Yeah. I didn't really get to talk to her. I didn't even know she knew me. And then she calls and says, hi, this is only Uzo, you know, we want a job. Jimmy Oduke was supposed to be playing the character, but he was a very yeah. raunchy character. You know, yeah. he's a pastor. Yes, yes, so yes. Jimmy was like, oh, he will pass that. He was too raunchy for yeah, him. And yeah. then only called, I don't know how. Yeah. You know, at that time, I, I, don't, I did one small film, one small character with Waje and Omomi. She is. There's a yes, film she that is, she is. Yes, yes, I saw that. You know, yes. I did, I played one pastor, right. one Randy pastor. Yeah. And I think Chris Energy, who had seen me on the film, right. I think he directed the film. You know, I think she, he now told Onya about me. Mm. And then she called randomly. That was how I got my life back. Mm. So from that day, if Onya did 10 films um, that year, I was in nine. Yeah. And that was how my journey just started, you know, and, you know, yeah. What is it like to be fired? <laughs> Who? <laughs> he removed his glasses. <laughs> Look, let me tell you. I, I came to work. You know how it is. I just, I just showed up at work, mm. you know, mm. a regular, not a normal day. And forensics said they had investigations. You know, they, they were investigating something. I didn't know. But my boss, my line manager at the time, had told me like, oh, there's something happening in the company. You know, mm. it's a telco. So yeah. what happened in a nutshell was the amount of data that my company at the time was selling wasn't commensurate to the amount of money that they were making. Right. So we, they were selling data. They were seeing yes. that data was being expended, yeah. but the, the money, money wasn't, wasn't coming in. in. 
And mm. then I, I was leading, at the time, I was leading a group called the Geek Force, you know, which was like basically a, a, a group of tech people who mm. would tell you how to utilize your phone, enjoy your data. So apps were becoming a thing, right. you know, people were beginning to understand what apps could do. Right. So it was my team that, you know, so yeah, voila, bust. And I didn't know, so I showed up mm. at work. And mm. the forensic started, and they just everything, the hell just broke loose. Yeah. One day they told me someone me to head office mm. and I got there. Somebody had to take the fall. Yeah. And it had to be me. Yeah. Fam. Yeah. It was quiet. <laughs> you know when you're fired, yeah? Yes. Oh, it's quiet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like you just hear silence. Yeah. And you're wondering what do I how do I tell anybody, anybody. that I was fired? I couldn't even tell my parents who held me in high esteem because mm. I've never really failed in my life. Mm. I mean, from primary school to secondary to uni, I never really spent six months at home. I was always just going, moving. you know, moving. And then five years after, when I'm supposed, I have come to a place where I'm almost looking at becoming a manager. Yeah. I had become a specialist. You know, in telco, we know it's all, yeah. you, know, I, you know, so I had become a specialist, moving on to becoming, you know, hoping to become a manager. Yeah. And then this happened. Yeah. It was it was it was one of the hardest things yeah. ever. Yeah. You know, it was it was really hard. Yeah. It was it was tough. Yeah. I I had quiet first, and then they, they strip you naked. It, basically, mm -hmm. you drop your oh, ID, ID card, cards. your laptop, yes. everything yeah. that makes you feel like you have a job. Yes. Yes. And then you walk out of the gate like a, a an outcast, and then you're looking around you, and there's nothing. Nothing. Yeah. I didn't know who to call first. Mm, mm. I just walked. It was Banana Island at the time. They're still yes, there. Yeah. So I walked from, I just started walking. I just I was walking. Just walking. I walked out of Banana Island, walked to Bodylon, came into Lekki. I was just walking. Yeah. Eventually I got home, I slept. I still didn't tell anybody. Yeah. And then I said, I, I, my resolve was like, just tell everybody that you change jobs. Hmm. <laughs> that was the best thing I yes, could do. Too, yes. I told I lied about it for a bit and then eventually after some years when I got my second job, I started yeah. telling people that like, okay, this, this is was what happened. actually yeah. happened. Yeah. It was it was it's it's terrible. Yeah. It's terrible I can only imagine. But you know, you know, when I started my career, I started my after my first job, I got into, you know, film and reality TV. Yeah. But you see, I couldn't do it sustain it. I couldn't continue in it as much as I loved it because I couldn't bear Waiting to be called. <laughs> I say it, you know. I was saying it to my friend, Tina Ladishi, who was, yeah. you know, I say, I can't, I, and now when I look at them, I mean, thank God I'm doing what I love now, yeah. but when I was doing, when my business at the time, I'm like, look at them and think, ah, I cheated myself because I thought, you know, to wait for someone to call me for a job, it is easy yeah. to see. So for you, what was that, that like to go from corporate, yeah. where you know what is coming, you yeah. know the career path, yeah. you can plan, yeah. to Nollywood. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, so it was, it was, it was tough. Yeah. <sighs> I hate to remember it mm. because I, I pushed it somewhere in my mind because it was, it was a very hard, it was a dark part. Mm. So I feel like I knew that I had the gift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've always known. Mm -hmm. I've always been a, uh, with all the humility in my heart, I've always been a star. Um, mm -hmm. From primary school to secondary school to university, somehow people just would know me for my art. Yeah. You know, and, and I was like, okay, so this is real life. You know, this is not uni anymore. This is not secondary school where I'm being funded, mm -hmm. but I'm still doing the art or I'm singing and that, because I, I sing, dance, and act. Yeah. And it was, I just, I just felt like, okay, she they said your gift will make room for you, mm -hmm. Abby. So now there is nothing. The chips are down. Um, your back is against the wall. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? And mm -hmm. I said, the only thing that I know that I can bank on mm -hmm. is this thing. I know that I'm good at it. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I'm going to prove it, but I'm willing to prove it. Mm -hmm. And I don't care how long it takes, mm -hmm. but I will prove. In fact, I was... I, I still have that prove it mentality mm. until so, people now have to tell me, Uzo, you don't have to prove anything. People know that you can act. But I, till, mm. till maybe even late last year. Wow. Yeah. I have my, my Egbon, Muiwa Aluko, right. um, who is a great senior friend of mine. Yeah. He was like, Baba, you sabi this thing. <laughs> you don't need to prove it. <laughs> yes. But I, I just felt like I needed to, I needed to tell people that. And then I was charging peanuts. I wasn't charging. They were paying me. I, I never reached to charge at the time <laughs> because no, yeah, you know, so you charge with, when you are, you are, you are yeah. standing. So, so they were paying me, you know, to just to show up, yeah. you know. And then people, some people, 
you know, would treat me terribly, which mm. came with the position, you know, but I just felt like, th I know that I'm good at it. Mm. And every time that I had to perform, I performed like it was my last performance. I always just left everything on the floor. Yeah. I always just wanted, and I wasn't, I, I didn't want to cut corners. Mm. I like the process yeah. a lot because I, I feel like the process will make you, it yeah. will form you, mm. and then you would understand fame. Hmm. You know, like, because I feel like fame is fleecing. Hmm. Fame is fecal. Hmm. And if you let fame be the driving force, then you don't understand what it is that God has given, given you. You know, so yeah. I just wanted to go through it. Yeah. You know? And yeah. this is me being very honest. Yeah. I just wanted to go through it. Yeah. I wanted to go, I, I wanted to do stage. I wanted everybody to just know that, oh, if it's stage, I'm good at it. If it's yeah. Film, I'm good at it. If it's yeah. dance, if it's me. some people don't even know I can dance, and I hate it too. That's why. So, so people started calling me the dark horse because I would be at the back, right. and everybody would just go and do the auditions and mm -hmm. do everything, and then they'll say, ah, "That boy, we get that move for face. You, Baba, you know what? Well, you know, big audition, you come, come now, you know." And then I'll show up, right. and then they're like, "What can you do?" I say, "I can act things like that." They'll look at me, and I'm, I'm stoic, you know. I'm this guy. Yeah, so they cannot see. Yeah, the, the, you know, I don't have dance. this funky hair. Yeah, and this time I was look you know, clean looking guy, and then I was saying, "I down, I'm like." So it was just made, like this boy in a dark horse. And so I just decided, and the first time I heard that word, I had yeah, to Google it. Right. I'm like, what did he say? Oh, the guy that is very unassuming. I'm like, yeah, I like it. I like, yes, I really, so, yes. And then I just put it, you know, and yeah. I, it, it was hard, but I just knew that I had to prove to people that I'm not, I'm not just, I don't think I'm a fine face. <laughs> <laughs> but Some people will disagree. You, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of people will disagree. Mm. But I, I, I don't want people to know me you know, because say, of oh, that. He's a fine boy, yes. no, or he yeah. can speak well, no. Yeah. I wanted people to know me for my because performance. Of your craft.